Welcome back to Uncle Jimmy's Pool Room after a week off. Brody, we had a lay, we had a bit we of did. a boy weekend. Yeah, we're fresh, we're yep. pumped, and we're oh. back. Big show for you today. Alex Rance, oh. one of the hottest guys going around, no doubt. Brooklyn Edwards got out and interviewed him. Uh, Wayne Carey, your boy, played for the my Melbourne boy. Lions. Yep, my boy. Your team got yep. out there and had a bit of a run around. And the Melbourne Football Club. Uh, is Stop right there. We're talking, we're talking Melbourne now, Melbourne Footy yes, Club. Yes, we're talking because Melbourne. Because there's a little bit of conject conjecture. Yeah, conjecture. that's the word. Is that's, that the word? That's a good word. Well done. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not real good with the pronunciation, <laughs> as we all know. But <laughs> I've got to say, the boys, Dino and Frank, Frankie, reckon that you, a little bit scared last week. That's why you wanted a week off. You don't want to talk about Melbourne and tanking and all that sort of jazz. Is this true? <laughs> We're going to go straight to tanking, are we? You're just going to throw that at me. Melbourne Football Club tanking. Yeah, it didn't, didn't happen, happen ha eh? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It didn't happen. Not Well, I didn't tank. You didn't tank? No, I never tanked. You're not a tanker. Obviously, the Melbourne Football Club going through a lot of hard times at the moment, but... Things are on the up, and you saw firsthand, mate. We got down there and checked them out. We are, we're working at it, mate. It, it hasn't been easy, but I just want to make, I want to remind you of Am something. Am I interviewing you here? Or you I want to remind you of something. 98, your football club was in a lot of strife. Look where you're at now. You're flying. You've got a lot of money. You worked hard at it. We just need to work hard at our stuff. Yeah, what else okay. do you want to ask me? Come on. Mate, mate I, I want to ask you, seriously, have Melbourne ever tanked? <laughs> when you were playing for that football club, ever. Someone should get you on the footy show, mate. You are hard-hitting journo. No, uh, I can't answer that, mate. I don't know what happened at the top. That's for the coaches. We all saw Dean Bailey's interview. You saw it. Take from that what you will. I'm not going to say anything because I don't know. When I went out that football game, and I think they're talking about the Carlton game, there was a Richmond game there as well. I didn't play in that Richmond but game, Robbo, but I tried my hardest, mate. That's all I can say. But, Robbo, I've got to say, you've kicked, in your last season at Melbourne, you kicked 30 goals in 10 games. And I watch you very closely because we're mates. Yep. All right, and I saw you playing reserves. It's alleged that we're mates. Reserves football, reserves football when you kick 30 goals in 10 games. Yep. And you're telling me that they didn't tank. Well, I did get dropped, surprisingly, that year. I, 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 were you angry? Of course I was angry. I was very disappointed. Let me ask you, and mate. Did everyone at the club think you should have been playing at that moment? I suppose they all said... Is that right. considered tanking then? I don't know what you call that, Dutchie. Have you ever tanked? <laughs> Have I ever tanked? I haven't personally tanked, no. Has the football always club that you've been involved in ever tanked? Collingwood well, and Fremantle. putting this back on me now, Yeah, eh? I'm gonna. I'm um, gonna. Actually, as a matter of fact, yes. 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 I won't say what's, what club and who, who for, what coach, but it wasn't Collingwood. <laughs> <laughs> Barrow, Damien, call me, mate. We can we can work something out. We'll get him on I the show. I think everyone in every team at some stage, unless you've played in a top four side your whole career, they've tanked at some so stage. So Fremantle, when much. you were struggling over there in the years of 90... I didn't say Fremantle, you did. There you have it. Anyway, today we went down to the Melbourne Football Club. We were very lucky to meet with the interim coach, Todd Viney. Fantastic He's fellow, I think fella. you'll agree. Yep. Check this out. If you ever really wanted to know what goes on inside football clubs, today is a real, real opportunity. We're here at the Melbourne Football Club, the new Amy Park, the fantastic facility. We're in the foyer right now. There's some great stuff to show you, some people we're going to meet today. Get around and see what goes on at the Melbourne Football Club. Well, here we are in the pool area slash recovery. They've got the ice bars, they've got the hot pools there, spa. And a pretty decent looking pool there. That's all for the players to use at any time. How good's that? So this is where most of the rehab gets done. Players get injured, players need to get their massages, they need to make sure they're tip top ready to go for the weekend. This is where they come. This is a fantastic new facility. Uh, right on hand, right next door to where they train. They can come in here and get the, uh, the best of the best stuff. And, uh, I'll tell you what, there'll be a few players that spend a few hours in here. Right, we're in the real inner sanctum here. This is the coach's room. Todd Viney, the interim coach. Toddles, played footy with you, mate. And uh, I bet you back then you didn't think this was going to happen to you, did you? No, I never really thought that I'd be in the uh, big dog's office. Um, but uh, here I am, you know, so things uh, obviously haven't been great for us this year. And after that Geelong debacle, um, you know, things happened and all of a sudden... I uh, put my hand up and here I am. What's your focus really as a coach now until the end of the season? Oh, look, I've, since I've um, had this, this role for the last week and a half, it's just been back to some some basics, you know, getting some of the foundations right and uh, 
fundamentals. We, we're just going to get back to some of the, those you know, contested ball and defensive intent and you know, sticking to our game plan and game style. So they've been the real focuses for me over the last week and a bit, you know, just making sure we can uh, concentrate on those. And I think if we can do that, we'll be in most games. You, you're always a pretty hard-nosed player and, you know, like the uh, tackling and the hard-hitting sort of stuff at training. Have you brought some of that into uh, the skill work out there? Yeah, no, we've introduced a little session on uh, most of the training sessions. It's a get-tough session, so uh, a couple, two or three little exercises just focuses on mainly the contested ball stuff. So uh, I think we've, we've got a young list and developing this, so if we can just get better in that area, you know, we'll win more of those 50-50 balls and try and get the ball going into our forward line a little bit more. I do want to ask you one more question. Obviously, you're doing a great thing here, filling in, and uh, you know there's a lot of people that uh, obviously want the job. Um, uh, it's not going to happen this year. It's going to happen at the end of the year. Who do you think the demons need? Is it a, you know, names have been thrown up. Is it a young man? Is it an old man? Someone who knows the game well? Someone who's uh, fresh out of it? What do you reckon? Oh, look, I, I, it's hard to say, but you know, we're we'll after a. You know, a good coach. Obviously, some of the names been thrown around. It would be fantastic. You know, I've got the experience. I've got premierships, but they're pretty hard to come by. You know, there's a lot of other clubs probably sniffing around as well. So I, I just think the main thing is that they've got the right character, the right uh, understanding of the game, um, and the right leadership qualities, because that's what it's all about: is leading a group of young men and trying to t develop them into a, you know, into an outfit. And so I just think it's just got to be the right person. But you know, obviously, we'll uh, we'll be casting their net out far and wide and see what we can come up with. Thanks, Tom. Well, here we are, just uh, with what Greeny usually lifts. Uh, this is this is about where you live, isn't it, Bradley? Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> me and the one kilo <laughs> dumbbell bar. Is, uh, he's my best mate at the moment. <laughs> now, we had to get the great Tasmanian himself. This one's a northerner. Dutchie's a, a southerner. I'm a northwester, so we're all a little bit different, aren't we? But we're all still pretty much related, aren't we? Yeah, I saw a great line last night. We, uh, you know, if you haven't re read your sister, you're not Tasmanian. <laughs> <laughs> That's going on. That is going on. I don't care. The demons moving forward. We've got some, uh, you know, some games at the end of the year that still, you know, go all right and uh, give something to the fans. And then moving into next year, what do you reckon the positive are for the Melbourne Football Club at the moment? Yeah, there's a lot of upside in our side, no doubt. With the with the young youngness, I should say, the youth of our, our team is is exceptional. So uh, those players are going to get better and. Um, you know, the likes of Trengove, Scully, um, you look at Tapscott, uh, Nicholson, um, even, even Liam Jarrah um, can go to another level. So these players uh, are going to get games over the next few weeks and, and hopefully we pull off a couple of wins to, to finish the season off. What about this facility, mate? Absolutely awesome. It's first class. It's, uh, you know, we've, we've come from Junction Oval and uh, we've come to Amy Park, which is, which is brilliant. No, don't see any possum shit anywhere. What's going on there? <laughs> no, that's what Bale said in his press conference when he left. The, the possum stuff was going down the computers, so that's one plus. <laughs> that's the reason why it all went bad. That's yeah, that's possum. It. Good on you, Bradley. Cheers, boys. Well, there you have it. The inner sanctum of an AFL football club. Fantastic. Thank you very much to the Melbourne Football Club for letting us do that. Dutchy, uh, pretty good? Well, it was pretty good, mate. And uh, the funniest part about those facilities is, and how good they are, you didn't get to see them. <laughs> I didn't, thank you very much. Uh, absolutely brilliant. No, we've got to see more uh, of the football club uh, than I guess a lot of people get to see. Yes. And I get to see more of your chest every week yeah. than a lot of people <laughs> but get But the facilities see. are nice. Nowhere near as good as a, <laughs> nowhere near as good as a Westpac Centre. Mm, yeah, right. Now, no, mate, I'm serious about that. That was a long time ago you played for the Magpies. Get over it. Now you're playing for the Maribyrnong yeah, Lions. Go the, go the Lions. Marby. Yeah. 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 And Woo. just quietly, a bit of a player got around in the day for the North Melbourne Kangaroos, played for you. Wayne, Duck, Carey, King, whatever you want to call him. He Huge. played for Marby Lions on the weekend, blew out his cuff, everyone saw it on the news. So it was very unfortunate, he kicked a great goal. Nice Took goal. A couple of great marks. Hey, and there was four or 5,000 people down there, Robbo. Yeah. Have you ever played in front of four or 5,000 people at local level? <laughs> I don't think so. Hell, I have, I have, I swear. Uh, Brooklyn Edwards, uh, she's got out there again and caught up with one of the hottest guys going around. He <laughs> plays for the uh, Richmond Football Club. Mate, you've got to say, he's a good Look at Rooster, Alex Rance. Goes all right. Goes, goes all right. Here it is anyway. Check it out. It's a gloomy, dark day outside, but I am here with this sexy stud and he's sure brightening my day. This is Alex Rance from Richmond. How are you? Doing well, little baby ray of sunshine in here, aren't I? <laughs> he sure is. Speaking of the weather, I hear you're from Perth. Yeah, yeah. So I popped back there for the, for the weekend, but it was uh, pretty miserable there. Seems like it's a bit, a bit miserable over Perth, but yeah, need to work. Missing those Perth beaches though? Very much so, very much so. Yeah, the ones over here are a little bit, uh, a little bit cold and 
Yeah, not my cup of tea. I hear your dad was an AFL player. Does that help your game? Uh, back in the day, yeah, it's sometimes a little bit of a hindrance, him knowing a bit more about the game than, uh, than me at times, but uh, yeah, no, it's good to bounce a few things off. All right, so let's talk about some behind the scenes football stuff. Um, do you have a routine before a game? Uh, not so much of a routine, just smash the pasta, that's about it, and pretty quiet night the night before, a few movies on the couch. What do you go for in a woman? Um, nice intellectual woman with some, yeah, big intellect. Um, yeah, I think, you know, someone... Ladies, he said big intellect, not big anything else. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, uh, I think that's the main thing, you know. you know. The looks don't go astray, but obviously they're not the first things you look at. You know? Now, um, when I Googled you, it said you're a very tough, strong player. Do you think that's the kind of guy you are, like, when it comes to women in relationships? Because you seem like a bit of a softie to me. A tough kind of guy, yeah, put him in their place and, you know, tell him, no, nah, definitely not, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I probably have been known to not wear the pants in previous relationships and that kind of stuff, you know, whatever happens, happens, so, um, yeah, no, just a fun-loving kind of guy, you know. Is there a profession that females can have that turns you on, like nurse, air hostess, is there a particular career you'd like your ideal woman to have? Uh, interior designer, I think I find, you know, there's the intellectual capacity as well as the, you know, Sort my house out. Going back to the intellect, very impressive. A very important question now, Alex. Why should you win Uncle Jimmy's most eligible bachelor of the AFL? Well, I think, you know, I'm a pretty fun-loving kind of guy, you know. <laughs> um, that's not for the guys, by the way, you know, for the, for the chicks. Um, but yeah, you know. He's not bad on the eye either. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time today, Alex. Not only did you get to speak to me, but you also walk away with some great prizes today. Did you know that? No, I didn't, but uh, I'm sure you're going to tell me what they are. I am. Uh, a Sasser Security voucher, a Man What A Fuss voucher, and two Peter Worth t-shirts. Pretty cool, huh? Brilliant. Well, I've actually got a prize for you as well. Beautiful rose. Oh, that is sweet. Oh, this is going to score you lots of points with the girls. Thank you. <laughs> Alex Rance could be a chance <laughs> to win uh, Uncle Jimmy's Bachelor no, of the Year. No, not, not one of your better ones, let's be honest. Talk about better ones. We've got a new sponsor, Dutch. Yes, yeah, Seeking Cabare Insurance, and the man himself's here somewhere, Davo. Davo. Come on, come Ooh, on. Come Welcome, on here, mate. Mate. Welcome Dutchie. aboard, mate. Now, mate, let's talk to us about Seeking Cabare Insurance, mate. Basically, Dutchie, we're an independent company, a line yep. of over 28 insurance companies throughout Australia. Simply put, Robbo, yep. we'll find you the best cover to suit any budget. Right, but I'm more interested in this right now because the great man himself, Chris Judd, tell me what's going on here. Basically, we've got a promo run on this week, Robbo. If you sign up for income protection between now and next week's show, you could win this. Right, so a random person who rings up Davo, and the number should be on the screen right now as we speak. Ring him up and uh, make sure you get some insurance from Davo. It's got to be Davo, it's got to be that number, and you could be the winner of this Chris Judd signed photo, all framed up and it looks lovely. Davo, okay. you're a legend, mate. Get out of here. Off you go. You haven't paid that much money, mate. Off you go, son. <laughs> match of the round, Robbo. Yes, match of the round. It's going to be a huge week of football. Yep. I can't wait to get into it because St Kilda playing Collingwood. Hello. Uh, huge game. Huge game. Now, Robbo, St Kilda are back. All right? They're mm. going pretty well. They're going pretty well. The few games in a row now, and oh, I love the Saints. All right. Do you think they're up to it? Do you think I they think can actually make the finals, possibly top four and go all the way? Well, I think they can. I really do believe that they've got a bit of a roll on right now and some players playing really well. Here's the rest of our tips. Well, do you think they can beat the Pies? More to the I, point. I, I think the Pies are at the moment, after a slog game over there in, uh, over in Adelaide, uh, they're going to rest some guys, apparently. Maybe they're a chance to win this. So, mate, they're going to have to rest at least 15 players to be any chance to lose this game, let's be honest. Yeah, well, let's be honest. No. Dutchie's sporting bet, bet of the week. You've got some uh, good form. Up. Yes, yes, got some good form. I'm going for Carlton, uh, 1 to 39 point margin. You get $2.20 for that, Robbo. That's, that's pretty good odds. Who are they playing? I forgot who they're playing. They're playing against Frio, and that's over there. Uh, yeah. Frio got a couple of injuries, one suspension. I think that should be just too strong for them over there. Yeah, well, I'm going to go back to that game, Collingwood Saints, because I like it so much. I think Collingwood will win uh, between 1 and 24 points. They're going to pay $3.85. So you think it'll be tight? You think it'll be tight? I think it'll be tight. I just think it will be. A little bit like you. <laughs> Remember, there's no better bet than a sporting bet. Collingwood Jumper, we were giving it away to the best blogger about that guitar I smashed over your back, yep. which one of the best moments of my Who life. Won it? Uh, we have a winner. His name is Stephen Cornford. Well done, Stephen. We're going to be sending that Collingwood Jumper yes, out Yes, you here. are a winner, but you've got a shocking name. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Come on, mate. It's a bit hard. It's an, Cornford. It's an Uncle Jimmy's pool room. Loyal. Nah, he's hey. a legend, Corny. <laughs> <laughs>
Corny. That's been the show. It's been huge. Melbourne Football Club. Alex Rance, what else did we do? Seek and compare insurances. It's just been wonderful to see you again, mate. Oh, it's been great to be here with you, Rob Boss. You boss, missed boss. me, didn't you? I'm actually glad you're nice to me for once. And See you, folks. We love you. <laughs> <laughs>